Starting a startup is really hard. We all know that over 90% of startups fail. And if you're watching this video, maybe you currently own a startup or you want to start a startup. Well, if that's the case, the next logical question is, well, why exactly do over 90% of startups fail? But that's a question that I at least personally didn't know the actual data backed answer to until I sat down to research this video. And so in the next few minutes, I'm going to cover the myths about why startups fail, then the big reasons they fail, and finally steps that you can take to be part of the 10% based on the exact reasons as to why the vast majority of startups do fail. It's gonna be a fun one, so grab your caffeine, open that notes app, and let's go. Okay, now over 20% of you watching this right now currently own a business, and if you're part of that group, then the next 90 seconds are for you. If you are running any kind of online business or working with international clients, then you know that dealing with payments across multiple countries is a nightmare. Currency conversions eat into your profits, you're juggling all kinds of bank accounts, and every transaction just comes with these fees that start to add up. And that is the exact use case for a platform called Airwallex that you may have heard me talk about in this video. And to recap, Airwallex powers over 150,000 businesses globally with one unified platform for global finance. They let you have one global account with local bank details in over 60 countries and also to collect and hold more than 20 currencies, convert across over 60 currencies at interbank rates, and pay out funds to over 200 countries and regions globally. And there are three parts specifically to the platform that I personally find most important. So first, it materially saves you money on foreign exchange. So by holding balances in over 20 currencies and paying out suppliers in their local funds, you avoid forced currency conversions and unnecessary fees that eat into your margin. Now, second, it's one unified global account to run all your finances. So you can accept payments like a local from over 160 different payment methods, have a multi currency account that gives you local bank details in over 60 countries. And finally, you can use multi-currency corporate cards with built-in expense management to control spend. And third, it may be the most relevant if you've never heard of Airwallex prior, this platform plugs directly into your current stack. So if you're on Xero and QuickBooks for accounting or maybe NetSuite or Shopify or WooCommerce, all the payouts and the invoices and reconciliations are full-on automated. So it's less admin, fewer fees, and ultimately faster ops. And of course, Airwallex is licensed and regulated and meets PCI, DSS, and SOC standards. So it's secure and compliant with specialized support teams for globally expanding businesses. And again, over 150,000 businesses like yours that work internationally can attest to the quality of Airwallex. So in summary, if you are a business owner and currently managing international payments, and that's whether you're an e-commerce selling into different markets or running a startup collecting payments from global clientele, or just working with overseas suppliers and contractors for your domestic business, this will save you money and you can learn more at the link in the description or at airwallex.com. So go hit that link, get yourself set up, and that said, let's get back to the video. So first, let's kill the boogeyman here. So what are the myths of why startups fail? So the big myth is that startups get killed due to competition. We imagine this David versus Goliath story where Google or OpenAI enters a market and just kills all the little guys. And that may be true in some cases, but it's a relatively minor reason for failure overall. And only about 20% of startups say that getting outcompeted was a top reason for the failure of their business. So it's a factor, but it's not even in the top three. And I think this is inspiring in a sense. It means that if you die, you are far more likely to die in a metaphorical sense from your own self-inflicted wound. And it's relatively unlikely that you're going to get steamrolled by something that is fully out of your control. Okay, now money is the big other one here where a lot of founders say, hey, if we just raised the next round, if we just had more money or could have scaled faster, then we would have made it. And this is kind of a half truth where 38% of startups do fail because they run out of cash. And that's the number two reason we're going to get into number one in just a minute. But the question I would pose is, is running out of cash the illness or the symptom here? If you have an awesome business that is going to do really well, that's dominating the market, then frankly, you should never run out of cash. You should have no trouble getting cash either from customers or from investors. And so I would argue that running out of cash is less so the illness than a symptom of something else that's going on. And that leads us into the big number one reason as to why most startup founders say their startup failed. And the reason is 
no market need. There was no product market fit. There was no intrinsic demand for whatever it is that they were building. And that is why 42% of all startup founders say that their business didn't work out. And again, you can make the argument that listing, oh, we ran out of cash is really just a symptom for that problem of there wasn't enough demand. So these are oftentimes people who don't fail because their product is bad or because they couldn't get investments. It's just that nobody wanted it. And it's so easy, right, to fall into that kind of idea trap where you love your idea, but you kind of only actually validate it after you've already built it or, or assembled the team or gotten a lot of money to go and deploy it. As a story to illustrate this point, there was a company called Juicero, and this is one of the most famous failures in all of Silicon Valley history. Now, this company raised over $120 million from tier one investors like Google, and their product was a Wi-Fi enabled smart $700 luxury juice machine that squeezed single-use pre-filled packets of fruit and vegetable pulp. And this machine was a work of art that had over 400 custom parts, a scanner and a motor that is powerful enough, quote unquote, to lift to Tesla. And this team had awesome engineers from Apple and Google, but they were solving the problem of juicing being too difficult. And in 2017, a Bloomberg video went viral that showed you could take these $7 juice packets packets and squeeze them by hand and you would do it faster than the $700 machine. So the analogous way to be in that 10% to succeed is just test the $7 packet before the $700 machine. Now I made a video recently that's how to validate your business idea in less than 24 hours. That's one of the most valuable videos I think I've ever put out on this channel. Because with that approach, you can validate your idea. You can get it in front of customers and actually sell it before you've actually built it and put any effort or resources into developing it. And money, and there is so much money out there. There are so many investors. There's such liquidity across these global markets such that if you can validate your idea and there's real traction, money really shouldn't be a problem for you. So go watch that video. And the big, I think, just lesson from actually looking at the data is that validation is empirically so critical. Talk to customers Make sure the demand is there before you actually build. That said, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.